host of the Johnny A Show here on uh, ESPN New York. Today we're going to talk about NBA playoffs, what happened with Derrick Rose and uh, Iman Shumpert on Saturday, and Rondo being suspended. Also, we're going to go in depth with the hockey playoffs. Can the Rangers actually win? Can Henrik Lundqvist lead them to the uh, Lord Stanley's Cup? We're going to go into the baseball a little bit with about the Red Sox, their shaky start. Also, here in New York, we're going to talk about Andy Pettit. Will he make a good comeback? Also, the draft was last week. We're going to talk about the draft a little bit, how the Giants and the Jets did. And finally, if we had enough time, we'll go into St. John's. Last weekend, uh, they had a great recruiting class. They had some a couple commits, so we'll see what happened. But today we're going to start off with uh, Derrick Rose and the Chicago Bulls. With about a minute to play on Saturday in the Bulls opening game against the 76ers in Chicago, Derrick Rose was still in the game with a minute, about a minute left and up 12, and he hurt himself, tore his ACL, out for the rest of the playoffs. This is huge because Derrick Rose is the Bulls' starting point guard. Now, there's been speculation that Rose has missed about 27 games this year. And uh, his stats without him, the Bulls' stats without him, are they've played 27 games without Rose, and they've won 18 with them. So, I mean, they haven't done terrible without him. But still, Derrick Rose is the anchor of this team. He's the point guard. He's he's the heart and soul of this team. He's what gets them through the games. Now, I have the stats with me right now about Derrick Rose when he is with and without the Bulls this season. With Rose, the Bulls are 32 and 7. Without, they're 18 and 9. Points per game with Rose, 98.1. And without, 93.9. That is not that terrible. But also in the playoffs, you need you need your star player. Especially when you think you're going to face the Heat. If they get past the Knicks and make it to the Eastern Conference Finals. That's a great Eastern Conference Finals matchup. And if you if the Bulls are without Derrick Rose, that's huge. They're probably not going to get to the Heat, and the Pete are probably going to make it to the NBA Finals. Now, Derrick Rose was not the only injury this weekend. Saturday also, Iman Shumpert, the starting shooting guard for the New York Knicks, tore his ACL about the same way that Derrick Rose did in a non-contact injury. And, and then on Sunday, Rajon Rondo lost his temper a little bit in the Celtics game one versus the Atlanta Hawks, and he bumped the uh, ref after a bad call late in the game, late in the fourth quarter. And to talk about this, we have Nate Perkins, who is the uh, NBA insider for ESPN.com. Hey, Nate, uh, what do you think the injury to Iman Shumpert, how how bad is it going to hurt the Knicks? Well, you know, it's the last thing they need right now. He was, uh, you know, he was a real spark for them, something they really didn't expect at the beginning of the season to be a real factor. And, you know, he usually guards the other team's best player. It's just the last thing they need right now. And now with the Knicks down 2-0 after last night's loss. And following that loss, we learned about Amari Stoudemire punching a a fire extinguisher, the, 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 the glass piece in front of a fire extinguisher, laceration to his hand. There was no ligament damage. So, I mean, that's a good sign for the Knicks. But he is reportedly out for game three. He might be out for the rest of the series. Uh, with the Knicks down 2-0, going back to the Garden with two games at the Garden, you know, what is your take on them maybe coming back or maybe even winning game three Thursday night and making it a series? Well, that was that was just an irresponsible move by the $100 million man, Amari Stoudemire. He should know better than that. He uh, He's supposed to be one of the leaders of this team, and that's just strictly unacceptable. That's, that's what I have to say about that. And then... Going forward, you know they they got an uphill battle right now. The Heat are the Heat are feeling it. They got a couple of players that LeBron James and Dwayne Wade that are going to be tough to stop, especially with Shumpert out. That is one of their best defenders. And I mean to get it started, they got to get Melo going. They got to get him some open open looks. He's he's really been struggling to find the open looks. The, the Heat are guard, the Heat are um they're really keying on him. And you said it exactly right, Nate. Uh... Amari is just being irresponsible. This happened last year in the warm-ups at Boston. He tried to do a re- some kind of reverse layup dunk, hurt his back, and he was out for game two, and he was out for game three. And it really hurt the Knicks as they were swept by the Celtics in uh, four games last year. And uh, as we talk about the Celtics, as you know, Sunday, Rondo, he was suspended for uh, bumping the ref. You know, what's your take on that? I mean, I know it was a really heated moment at the key point of the game. 
I think they were only down down four at that point. And you know, anytime anytime a player bumps the ref, that that's gonna be a one that's gonna be at least a one game suspension any single time. And Ron, Rondo is supposed to be you know the leader, the point guard of this team. And I'm sure Doc Rivers you know had a long talk with Rondo, and hopefully it won't happen again. Yeah, uh, thank you, Nate. I appreciate your insight. But now we got to take a uh, commercial break. When we come back, we'll talk about the uh, NHL playoffs and the New York Rangers. We are the New York Knicks. We are the New York Knicks. Say go New York, go New York, go. Go New York, go New York, go. Say go New York, go New York, go. Go New York, go New York, go. We're back on track on the fourth floor in Morris 94. And now we're back here with the Johnny A Show. We're going to continue with the NHL playoffs and the New York Rangers. Here we have Christian Tilly. He is a uh, beat writer for the New York Rangers. How you doing, Chris? I'm doing great. How are you? Doing good. Thank you. All right. Today, we're going to talk about the Rangers. Currently, the Rangers are uh, tied 1-1 with the Washington Capitals in the Eastern Conference semifinals. Tough loss yesterday with uh, Ovechkin putting in the net with about eight minutes left on a power play. They lost 3-2 in the game. Game three, going back to Washington on Wednesday night. Now, it's been speculation around New York. You know, they got a young team. Not not too many veterans. Really, the only veteran on the team is Brad Richards. He's uh, one of the assistant captains. And uh, this team is anchored by Henrik Lundqvist, who is a fantastic goalie. But it's uh, been talk about around New York and about the NHL. If if you know Henrik, who Henrik Lundqvist, who is known around New York as the King, can actually lead the Rangers to a cup. Now we're gonna ask Chris. What is your take on this if you think Henrik Lundqvist could actually lead the Rangers to Lord Stanley Cup? Hey, John. It's a great pleasure having me on the show. And, um, of course, I think Henrik can stand up to the pressure. If you remember, back in the Olympics, he he stood up to the pressure going up to being the best goalie in the world with Sweden, their goaltender. So I think he definitely has confidence and the ability to be the best goalie in the NHL. You know, he's had uh, Olympic experience. He's played for Sweden. But, you know, New York is, is one of the biggest markets in all of sports. With the media is crazy here. We all know that. We all work in New York. We we've been, we are media in New York. We understand that. But can he actually lo- live up to the hype of being the king of New York, you know, surpassing Eli and Jeter and Carmelo and just winning a championship here in New York? And you think he can do that? Of course I think he can. Um, he has the confidence because if you've been to a Ranger game this year, which I assume you have since the big fan that you are, um, every time he makes a huge save, the crowd erupts in chants of Henrik. So, of course, I think he can stand up to the pressure and he will lead his team to the cup. All right. Thank you, Chris. Love your insight and I uh, appreciate the time. Thank you. Okay, now we'll get into the draft. The draft was last last week, and here we have uh, Steven Ruske. He is a uh, beat writer for the New York Jets. He will uh, talk about the first two picks that the, dra- the Jets made in the first two rounds last week in the NFL draft. Uh, with the first pick, the, Jeff- the Jets took Quinton Couples, who was a defensive end from North Carolina. And with their second pick, they took Stephen Hill, who was a wide receiver from Georgia Tech. Uh, Steve, how do you think the the Jets made these picks, and you think they're going to work out for the Jets? Uh, I think uh, both picks are high risk, high reward. Uh, Quinn Couples coming out of North Carolina, very controversial kind of pick. Looking like the a lot of people are saying he's the next Vernon Golson, but can also be the next Julius Peppers. He's got a lot of speed coming off the edge, but not a lot of people aren't going to know like how he's going to do in the NFL. Uh, Stephen Hill is looking pretty good coming out of Georgia Tech. Um, tall receiver, six four, really fast. Everyone's comparing him to Calvin Johnson. Could help. Could help the Jets with red zone offense. Um, uh, stats were hindered because Georgia Tech uh, runs the option, so they didn't throw a lot. He only had twenty four catches, but they were in a lot of effective situations. Now uh, there was some speculation that Quinn Couples has no heart. That he has no motivation. He's a great player. He's a lot of potential, but he has no heart. You know, no potential. Do you think Rex Ryan could turn that around with Rex Ryan's fiery attitude? 
you know, he's, he's big on defense and he has a lot of a lot of fire in him. A lot, he, Rex Ryan has a lot of heart. You can see it on the sidelines. And do you think he could turn that around and quit in couples? Uh, even though a lot of people say that he he doesn't have a lot of heart, if anyone's going to be able to do it with his fire, it's Rex Ryan with his defense. Um, he's going to put him in the right place. He was talking about how couples can work a lot with uh, Muhammad Wilkerson. A lot of people didn't think he would be do, do that good, but he had a solid season as a rookie. Uh Rex Ryan could definitely uh, turn Quinn Couples into a solid defensive end in the NFL. Okay, thank you, Steve. I appreciate your time. Okay, now, uh, like I said earlier in the show, we had some time. We'll talk about St. John's men's basketball, and we have a couple minutes left. My, my producer told me so. So we have about a couple minutes left. We're going to talk about the recruiting classes that uh, Steve Lavin is putting together. Okay, uh, last year, as you all know, we had uh, – we had a great recruiting class coming in for uh, St. John's, and then we had some, uh, you know, a couple kids where uh, they weren't eligible and with their grades, whatever, blah blah blah. But this year, Lavin rebounded as he always does, as he did at UCLA, as he did at St. John's, putting together stellar recruiting classes to bring the Johnnies back on the map in the Big East. You know, we have Jakar Sampson, who was a recruit last year, got was ineligible. He was a top 100 pick. He's he might be one and done, just like Mo Harkless was this year. So he's our he's our top recruit for St. John's. I keep saying we because I'm I'm a New Yorker. I'm a, I'm a part of the Johnnies, you know. On campus, uh, St. John's had Steve Lavin hosted uh, two recruits from Monroe College Upstate, which is Orlando Sanchez and another kid named Marco. Orlando Sanchez is rumored to be. Had the same body, if you guys remember, as Justin Brownlee, who played two years ago, and just like Mo Harkless, same versatile player, can play many positions, you know, big down low, big post player. So this is a big, big, big get for the Johnnies, and also his teammate Marco, who is from France. He's a big-time shooter, and also on campus that weekend was Max Hooper, who is from uh, Harvard. He'll, he'll have to sit out a year, though, because he's a transfer, but he uh, he's all about shooting. He's a shooter, and that's what he does. And then uh, this weekend on campus, the Johnnies had uh, Derek Wood, who uh, recently committed about a year ago, had some academic problems, but now he recommitted. He'll be back with us with the Johnnies. Hopefully, uh, Steve Lavin and his uh, and his coaches they can make a a big run at the Big East this year. You know, just like they did two years ago. Hopefully, make the tournament. You know, last season was a uh, very unsuccessful. I know, I know he wasn't happy about it. I talked to him about it. He wasn't too happy with it. But, you know, he brought in a stellar recruiting class, bouncing back. The Johnnies will be back, along with all our players, D'Angelo Harrison, Phil Green, Amir Garrett, Don Pointer, God's Gift to Chua. You know, I think this this class is really shaping up, and I think the Johnnies can really uh, they can really do something this year coming up in the uh, 2012-2013 season. Okay, folks, that's all for me today. You guys, As always, you can reach me on my uh, my weekly show. The Johnny A Show featuring John Amoruso. Uh, our confident contact info is uh, 718-555-6868. At email, you can reach me at jfamoruso at gmail.com if you have any questions. And my uh, Twitter account is jfamoruso at twitter.com. You know, you uh, send any questions, we'll answer them right away on the air. All right, thanks, guys. Have a good day.